Hi friends, today we are rolling in to our February faves and it was quite the month because I think it was a diverse serving of favorite items ranging from makeup, brushes, nail polish, shower caps. We got a shower cap on the list. I wanted to start with what you probably are asking yourself. What is on Alicia's cheeks and eyes? By this time, I would have already liked, I think according to my schedule, would have uploaded my Esum number no. three Harmony palette review and thank you for your support on that video and also for Esum in their willingness to work with me and to compensate me for that video like I had said the minute I laid my eyes on this color story I immediately thought of this type of look with heavy blush around the eyes and cheeks but what stand out with number three harmony is its sheer versatility with just using matte shades because I do sometimes get wrapped up in combining as many textures and finishes as possible because I do love the shine I do love pearl finishes but there's something beautiful about matte especially when it comes in these array of shades with the corals the violets the marigold and the terracottas. It is a blast to mix them together and as I had said in that video, because Esum is a makeup artist forward brand, they heavily consider the formulations, making sure that the user has full capacity in creating new colors, different types of looks on the skin, and having formulas that can be used on lips, on cheeks, and eyes, on the entire face, and give the artist the room and the space to be creative and to create that magic with having the tools and the actual textures at their fingertips. So this was a blast to use and I'm sure you're wondering because I have brought up the fact that I am definitely, I at least is heavy on my radar, the upcoming Danessa Myrick's Groundwork Palette 2 in the rose. <laughs> Because this does remind me of the Danessa palette 100%. It might be a little bit of a battle in terms of which one to get. I believe the Danessa one will cost less. I believe Groundwork is $62 and this is $80. If you are a makeup artist, you probably will get a discount from Esum because I do believe they have an artist discount program on their site for for their makeup and Danessa as well if I'm not mistaken so it's really up to you and I believe the Danessa one does have the mousse textures with the powder textures so it'll be an interesting comparison I'm definitely going to make a comparison between the two palettes because all in all listen because it all works together you know what I mean I'm happy to have these shades but I had to offer a spot for the number three Esam palette out of all the palettes thus far this has has to be one of if not my favorite because it's just seamless for me to use I can throw on any of these shades whether on cheeks and eyes and although they are matte textures matte finish the blend is incredible smooth on the skin it does not look patchy you can sheer it out you can build up the color as you like I have used this formula with several different brush types I do like it with squirrel goat combinations because you get a nice blend from the goat but you get a lighter application from the squirrel hair. I've used it with pine squirrel with exclusively all goat hair. It's been fun experimenting with different tools using Harmony, but again, had to lay it down as a favor because the springiness of it all. Okay, friends, it is just shouting from my face. Continuing with a few makeup favorites, I was happy with the items that I purchased from the Natasha Denona members flash sale that the brand held. I received a text saying, if you log into your account on natashadenona.com, you get 25% off. And I picked up Metropolis Mini or Mini Metropolis Mini Trio Chrome, two concealers from the High Glam Concealer line and the Mini My Dream Glow Blush Compact. Extremely happy with the Natasha Denona concealer as I thought I would be. I held off in purchasing this product when it released last year because around the same time I had purchased the Lancome Taunt Idol concealer and still happy with that one. I have the Taunt Idol today as I like to bounce back and forth just to compare the different products that I have in my collection saying the Natasha Denona is more like this, the Taunt Idol is more like that. I prefer the Taunt Idol shade but the shade generator on Natasha's site on the product page for High Glam suggests 
tested R5. R5 is the shade I got for under my eyes and it is pretty bright. I have to be careful with how much I apply because it could look a little too contrasting if I apply too much. For the rest of my face and targeted blemishes, I have the NP10, which is a great shade match, I have to say. Better shade match than the R5, although the R5 is not so much the shade matching for under my eyes. It is a little too light, but I work with it. NP10 is great for all over my face, yes, but just the parts that need a little more coverage, the red spots around my nose, blemishes around my cheeks and my jaw, or if I apply my Suku foundation, this pairs beautifully well with the Suku shade. So they all work together nicely. And of course, the mini My Glow Blush is a fantastic trio. You have the rose, the light rose, and this pinky champagne shade. I find just virtually easy to use. I slap this on my cheeks when I want a little bit of color. It's a great everyday shade that's not too much, but also not too light on my complexion. It gives my face a liveliness that's not the same as what I'm giving now, not quite the same as a coral, pinky, peachy salmon shade, but the more desaturated rose from the mini my glow blush compact i i think it's fantastic and the size just makes it practical to travel with and it's an easy pick for me when i'm on my way to maddie's house or bay's house you can go wrong with this color in terms of its role it looks great when i shoot for stretch it ab it looks great when i need something on the cheeks to teach with so i greatly appreciate the shade and of course the mini metropolis and mini triochrome from the two, I was pleasantly surprised with Mini Trio Chrome. I held back initially because I saw that it was blue and I had my judgments about it. It will be too much. What am I going to do with that color story? Blah, blah, blah. I didn't realize the critique at that time. I didn't realize the feedback from Mini Trio Chrome. People weren't happy with it because it wasn't <laughs> blue enough. I guess they wanted more from these matte shades, but that's what I love about it. I love that the blues are not in your face. Although the color story looks intense, there is a softness in Mini Trio Chrome that I just think outrageously beautiful and it encourages me now to wear more blue eyeshadow, maybe because it possesses just a softness about it. Like I had mentioned, although of its blue shade, it looks cloudy and hazy, especially when I apply this dual chrome shade. I love how it applies on the lid. It's so soft and easy to blend. And when paired with these mattes, it just offers up this beautiful haze of blue that doesn't just look blue. It allows me to just blend out the edges. It still appears soft, but smoky, with the blue color that's almost like teetering on blue gray. It has more of like a, a desaturated, feel to it because this was the color role that if Natasha wanted to put in her bigger trio chrome palette, this is what it would be. And when you see the trio chrome colors, they are desaturated. They're like desaturated neons, if you will. So I think it was appropriate for her to have the blue, but at this just more subdued level in terms of the color intensity. And I love the heck out of this palette, my goodness. And that's why I requested mini pastel for the Beautylish gift card event video that I'll be working on. So happy to get that palette because I had the same reservations, similar ones. I saw a trio chrome, was like, ah, too much room. I saw a pastel, oh, too much, which is silly because I have mini pastel. But when I saw that mini pastel came out, I'm like, ah, I don't need it, <laughs> whatever. Because I've been thoroughly impressed with Natasha's minis so far, I am thoroughly so excited to try mini pastel. That will get its own, at least YouTube short. You'll see it in action in the Beautylish video 100%. Had to give a shout out to mini Trigger Chrome because it is chef's kiss. Now, this is not a new product, but I have to give a shout out to this Gucci bronzer. And the reason why I am, because I had mentioned in my should I buy, should I window shopping video that I had my eyes heavy on the Christian Dior bronzer. And Chris was so kind in saying, listen, friend, I get what you're saying, but the compact, just wait for a better compact. And I'm like, you're right. And I have three of these bronzers that I should use more often. This is number four. Listen, the Gucci bronze formula is outstanding outstanding i have three of them and i love the dior compact but i gotta give it 
to the Gucci Compact. This is definitely more beautiful, but just more luxe heavy feeling than the Dior because the Dior just has the quilted lid. This is, yes, plastic, maybe some metal. I'm not entirely sure, but look at this. I'm silly, I'm not getting the Dior. I might be getting that star filter. That's still on the radar. Hopefully Sephora will get it because I forgot that I have a Sephora gift card. So we got the gift card, we're gonna wait for the sale because I'm not paying full price for that star filter product, okay? Maybe getting the glow maximizer, but I don't think I'll be getting the Dior bronzer because I do have the Gucci bronzer. At the end of the day, yes, I know the Dior bronzer has a little bit of pink, but mm, is it really gonna make a difference? I don't know if it is, especially with, look at all this blush I got in my face, you know what I'm saying? Like this makes a difference. A little pink strip on the bronze powder, I don't know. I don't know if that's gonna, mm. So that was my way in preventing an unnecessary purchase, but moving on. We got nail polish, and this part of the video is sponsored by Bay again. He was so kind in gifting me the recent Moon Cat collection, the Persephone one. It has an official name, but I it can't recall it at this moment for Valentine's Day. And when it first released, I was heartbroken because I'm trying to save money, trying to get this AdSense up, and I held back, but he asked if I wanted anything in particular, and I was like, well, this is nail polish. All nine shades. I actually have uh, two. The Poison Ivy, is this Poison? No, 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 Devil's Ivy. Devil's Ivy, which is the magnetic, and this one here, and Petals for a Narcissist. Incredible. I think I might have some B-roll here. Queen of the Dead. Queen of the Dead is a thermal polish where the cold color is like this deep, dark, black red and the hot color is like this burgundy oh my gosh it is so much fun to see this color change outside because when i'm walking when i'm walking fast the heat gets to my fingertips in my pockets but when i take my hands out the wind then causes that black dark red manicure to occur it is so much fun to watch in action i also use feels of elysium i don't think i took a video of that did take a video of freshly bitten freshly bitten get out of here a gorgeous gorgeous color. It's this duochrome with magenta and wine red with like gold flakes in there. I also apply the Trouble with Immortality, this insane metallic. The shine on this is crazy and the way these polishes apply, smooth and just creamy, incredible formula from from Mooncat, I mean, what else should I expect? I still have to apply to all who ghosted me because this is the lavender base and I think with the blue flip, I also have to apply Garden of Evil. Oh my gosh. And I think one more, Love Bomb. I gotta get into Love Bomb. So I got three more to apply once I complete the collection in wearing all the shades. And I have my eye on that new ILNP because those are all magnetics and their pastel and the way ILNP presented the collection was to wear it more of like that velvety effect. The way I have it here is more of like a, a cat eye if you will because I had the magnet go diagonal so you see that silver strip run this way on my nail bed but you could also do it by taking the wand and placing it either side of the nail so those magnetic pigments kind of gather in the center and have that velvet effect on the nail. I think that is so beautiful, especially with those shades. Oh my gosh. My Ask Bay again for more nail polish. Stay tuned. For brushes, Fude Beauty and Tao House were so kind to send me this set for review and I have an entire video dedicated if you would like to check it out. I'll make sure to have the link down below. But these are all the brushes. Standout one for me has to be the EH04 because it's long bristled, pine squirrel. It has a lot of flexibility, but incredible pickup, lay down, and blend. This is the type of brush that I can complete an entire eye look with. I'll take my darker shade on the outer lid, pull it through the crease, then take another shade here on the lid, take a highlighter shade on the inner corner, swipe color here under the lash line, and I'm done. This is a fantastic brush. The larger one, the EH03, great for one and done if you don't want all those components that I outline, outer lid, lid, and lower 
lash line in your corner if you just want to go swoop just take that one color whip it across maybe take a little bit here on the very tip of the brush if you don't want that haze effect if you want to hold that color tighter to your lash line then just be careful with that application but the eh04 is a fantastic brush as well as their others oh the eh01 come on this is a goat hair and squirrel blend great for finishing buffing the skin once all has been applied it has just this feather like feel and i had read sonia's interview with hakuhoto and sakiko one of the representatives from the brand was saying to prep your powder brushes before application you gotta whip it quickly across your hand so the bristles lay in place and they're more airy which will then lead to a better performance on the blend when you use the brush and we have the pine squirrel cheek brush which is phenomenal just for more precise work here i could take this with my Isom palette for instance because although it is a medium size brush i could take probably like two colors at once and then just pounce away okay this plays no games when it comes to the pickup with the pine squirrel please get out of here and there was the maquillé brush which is a travel blush let me let me get it the reason why it's goaded is because not ideal to travel with your brushes open-faced if you will in cosmetic bags i see that a lot still that people just throw in the brushes willy-nilly in the same bag they hold their makeup in and the bristles get pushed around they get abused you really should travel with your brushes separately but if you need to travel with a brush this already has a cap this is also from tao house their maquillage travel brush where you take the cap and it pushes the mechanism up and then it'll pop out the brush this is a cycle Ho Go and Squirrel blend luxe travel brush here with the lacquer where on the handle you have the sakura flowers and you have the maple leaves when you're all done you push the bristles down and put the cap back on to protect the bristles and the entire brush this is the way to go and i also have one from chikahoto a long time ago their beauty lush collaboration their eye brush if you're in a punch and you just need one or two of these brushes these maquillé brushes with the cap not a bad way to go. I'm sure you remember me mentioning shower cap at the beginning of this video. I bought one from Grace & Co. <laughs> and the reason why I have a shower cap is because I cook a lot. And if you cook a lot, you know how much of a pain it is when your hair smells like food and i use a lot of garlic and shallots okay i like my food tasty and inevitably your hair will smell and isn't it the worst that this happens on wash day hmm. and i looked this up because i've tried putting a cotton handkerchief over my head or just having my hair back and when your hair smells that's it it gets on everything it gets on everything whatever touches it that thing starts to smell it's a pain in the mm. i went to google and it said either shower cap or chef's hat i'm like oh shower cap and granted i could have gone to cvs and just gotten a goodie shower cap that's the name of the brand goodie but i was like fancy shower cap and the grace and co one came up it has a cute bow here on the front scrunch elastic on the back for secure hold now it is pretty tight around my head which is fine because i don't want any sense you know running up in there but i think eventually it would have a little more give the more i wear it but that has worked incredibly well now i can cook with confidence knowing that my hair is not gonna stink because man oh man how i just don't fantastic hack i didn't know about as i don't wear shower caps usually usually during showers because they're rather quick with my eczema prone skin i'm like in and out of there except for of course when i have to wash my hair that's my skin is dry on wash day but for cooking keeper and lastly on the list is my hobonichi techo a5 planner i had completed where is it i have it right here an entire hobonichi techo a6 last year for 2023 i wrote in every page and i was proud of myself because 
writing in planners was something I didn't think I was good at because I immediately associated good plan writing or planner writing with beautiful graphics and different fonts and illustrations because you know the stationary world on social media will get you. It will get you because there are these beautiful artists out there who dedicate a lot of their time to their planners and their planner artwork and whatnot and little old me can't draw for ish and my handwriting is okay although it has improved I'll, I'll tell you that when I see my handwriting how it was last year this time to how it is now drastically better okay slow clap for me and since because I completed an entire journal last year I thought that earned me the right to go a little bigger for 2024 because I actually found while writing my entries that I was starting to wanting to write more that the A5 or rather the A6 size was getting a little too small for these thoughts as I wanted to expand upon my training, my nutrition, my relationships with everyone in my life and friction points that I encounter day in and day out, little lessons that I learn or mistakes that I've made. I, I, want, I wanted to describe those moments more and include them more, why I wanted the larger journal. And it can be challenging at times for me because I do like to journal at the end of the day to practice recalling. Recalling is is, you know relying on your memory to go back and recall what happened that day just a memory exercise for me to practice so at the end of the day when I'm a little worn you know I wake up at like five in the morning okay fam I wake up five in the morning whether it's to do editing paint my nails for videos do the laundry something's happening early because I'm a one-woman show and when I am planning filming and editing when i'm doing it all i need the entire day because i start so early it's a long day for me and around 7 p.m i'm like okay it's time to write but i'm getting better at that as i'm trying to treat that time with my writing and with my journaling a time again to recall and to go throughout my day and also to zero in on those moments where I'm like, I'm gonna write about this later and to describe it. And that forces me to be more present throughout the day, to not just go through it and say, oh, so happy this day is over. Now it's an opportunity to say, what happened this day? What did I learn from it? What can I do better next time? So many things to jot down, to ponder about, to describe, and happy with the larger side. We're going strong. I know it's only March, but I have managed to write in every page. Also, a feature that the A5 has that the A6 does not, it has the daily columns. So I actually just bullet point what I did that day, like quick bullet point for instance on january 18th a thursday laundry breakfast cortado whole foods prepared chicken wash sneakers listed on macari still selling a bunch of sneakers on macari filmed with subversive cooked chicken and bison dinner packed headed to bays i like the fast bullet point section of my journal too because it just allows me to blueprint my day first and then i'll go and expand upon those different parts of my day and of course we got the calendar can't live without the large grid calendar right you we got maddie's house i'm going to see maddie this month as well so this helps me keep track of my client calls of any commitments that i have this is i love my little journal man i love my journal in just organizing my day going through my thoughts and forcing yes i'm going to use the word force because some you know some days are harder than others until it feels more seamless and organic Sometimes I do have to force myself, I gotta push myself to write as much as I can, to describe as much as I can, and don't hold back. You know what I mean? Just put it down there. Oh, oh, and one more thing, one more thing. On my birthday, January 20th, that passed, my friend Sam found an origami workshop. And I was like, oh, that's pretty cool. So we went to the origami workshop on my birthday and we've been going every third Saturday or every second Saturday, I think it's held at the 53rd Street Library. And the reason I mention this is because there might be activities in your community that you're not aware of. I wasn't aware of the origami workshop. 
And yes, it's something that I don't do usually and it's something that I had never thought myself of doing, but just being with different types of people all there for the same purpose, all origami enthusiasts from different backgrounds, different perspectives, but the one through line is that we're all there to fold. We're there to fold, we're there to share ideas, uh, share different folding types and techniques, and it's so much fun. It's so much fun to participate in an activity that doesn't necessarily include food or even exercise. I don't wanna say this the wrong way. I wanna say destructive behavior because, because usually when we get with people is to drink or to hang out late or just even Netflix binge. And not that Netflix binging is bad, but sometimes I think we get caught up in watching a lot of media and we we disconnect. We disconnect from being with other people and sometimes we isolate ourselves, right? And I get it if you're an introvert that you're like, whatever, this talk is not for me. But all that to say is nice to participate in an activity that encourages creativity and connecting that doesn't require alcohol or even food. It's just, you're there to fold and to create little swans. This is my little swan. I got my little boat. I have my heart. I have a dragon that Talo Sensei helped spruce up because my dragon head was not looking very dragony, all right? And again, it's fantastic to uh, meet someone like Talo Sensei and have Sam, my friend, discover this workshop. And now we're going to the Origami USA event at the American Museum of Natural History. If you are in New York, they are holding special origami workshops on March 24th. They did not tell me to mention this in my video. This is just from my enthusiasm if you want to hang out and fold i think they have a uh, beginner and intermediate high low intermediate so you could go on their website i'll actually make sure to post the link down below in the timestamps because it's a blast and i think a nice change of pace for myself because i get stuck in doing the same things all the time and you know when people ask you what do you do for fun I do origami for fun. That is it fam, my February faves. Can't wait to head in to March and see what that holds. They are a few makeup releases that I have on my radar. The Beauty Lush event coming up, the Sephora sale coming up in April. A lot of shopping planning has to be done. I'll see you down in those comments and until then, that is a wrap. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope this video helped. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up or maybe consider subscribing to my channel. And until then, I will see you on here again with another review tutorial, origami creation, or should I buy a video? Take care and I will see you again soon.